Hello and welcome to this video on turning a fuchsia into a bonsai. Fuchsia are a long-lasting flowering species. They grow quickly and have a very attractive appearance. Initially a very smooth bark followed by a much rougher, almost paper-like texture. This is a species that is readily available throughout many nurseries and almost entirely across the world. They will thrive most in human environments and do need to be watered regularly. Otherwise, they have very few demerits to speak of. You will want to keep them in bright but indirect sunlight and should be fertilized regularly to support their vigorous growth. The fuchsia bonsai should be repotted once every one to three years. It will vary slightly depending on the size of the pot and to another extent the kind of growth you've had with it. The more growth there is, the more regularly you will need to repot your bonsai fuchsia. You can get away with using any standard soil or potting mix, and ideally repot in spring as this will give the most result, so to speak. If you can, try and add some extra organic matter. This is more to provide longevity than it is anything else, and that is material to convert into carbon and give growth to your bonsai. There are two broad categories of fuchsia that are suitable. These are hanging pots, and those suitable for planting as a standard, upright, or shrub. We could have purchased either, but opted for a hanging basket variety. The advantages to choosing a variety, specifically meant for hanging baskets, is they lend themselves well towards a cascade or semi-cascade. It is similar to a juniper in many respects, where you can choose a prostrate or upright variety, and that the choice of variety will, to a certain extent, dictate what style you opt for. With this in mind, having opted for a hanging variety, we will turn it into a cascade or semi-cascade. The time frame taken for this can vary between 1 and 5 years, and after this they will be ready to be transferred into a bonsai pot. The challenge with this is going to be twofold. The first is that they do not take to wiring very well. It can be done, but it is an extra tedious task. The second issue is that the branches and trunk are very brittle. Small actions can easily break them. Patience will be required. When wiring, it's better to try and wire very loosely. And by that we mean, you don't really want the wire so much to be touching the branch initially. You're going to try and more guide growth than actually direct it with the wire. You'll also need to remove this much sooner and rewire again Two approaches to this that can mitigate those issues are to either create a U-shape or an S-shape with the wire, and this can be used for forcing certain branches in a particular way, largely downwards in this case. The soil mixture we're opting for for this is very simple. For the most part, we are using standard potting mix. There's nothing fancy in it other than a little bit of extra fertilizer. The soil will be gradually removed from the top over time, and this is for two reasons. The first is because we will want to reduce the volume of root, but secondly so that we can develop thicker roots near the top that will form the nabari later on. Two points will be important as we work to turning this fuchsia into a bonsai. The unneeded branches will need to be removed at this point, and as they're pruned back with a small ounce of a die back, we will be choosing which of the leaders to make into the new trunk. And this is one of the key things we need to decide early on with this particular example. There are many possible branches, and since we're only going to be using one or maybe two to create our cascade effect, we'll need to know which of them we're going to choose to weigh down to create that. During the summer, the future will be pruned on a weekly basis by pinching out the buds at the end. This is done for a number of reasons, but the biggest will simply be this is a very vigorously growing plant, and we want to try and control that vigor. The second reason, and this is perhaps the more important in the longer term, is that we're trying to reduce size and increase ramification. Something that will always and continuously come up with bonsai is ramification. And in this instance, given the nature of the fuchsia and that we will not necessarily be able to wire it, we're going to have to try and get as many branches growing as possible. This is going to allow us to do a method called cut and grow. Cut and grow, as the name suggests, is that you cut off any unwanted growth and hope that the plant will start growing where and how you want it to. This allows us to use a minimum of wire and therefore minimize the risk of the bonsai experiencing damage or dieback. 
When we are pruning, we need to be somewhat careful, but nothing that is going to be unusual. For the most part, you're just following good standard practice when it comes to pruning. Something like keeping your tools clean, cutting neatly, and similar. The other thing that with a fuchsia is that it can experience significant dieback and shock if you prune too aggressively. This is another reason why you try and avoid the issue of pruning. It is far less harsh on the tree overall. The other advantage we have to this is that the fuchsia can actually grow indoors. Now, this will vary much on your location. For example, if you are in the extreme northern or southern latitudes, you may want to consider growing it inside permanently. The closer you are to the equator, the more you can get away with having it outside all year round. If you are going to bring it indoors, try to have it facing towards the sun. So for southern hemisphere, that's the north. From the northern hemisphere, it's the south. This will give you the most light throughout the year. That means you'll get the most growth out of your fuchsia. What you see now is the initial development of a cascade fuchsia bonsai. It will take several more years of growth before it's ready, but at the end of that time, you'll be able to see how this is developed from a very simple, readily available, and easily accessed plant at a nursery into an actual bonsai. It demonstrates that the process for this is something that anybody can do with just a bit of patience and the right knowledge. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.